A lot of times, fear keeps people outside of the stock market and the investment world and potentially away from reaching their financial goals. However, by acquiring the adequate financial knowledge in stocks, you can begin to erase that lack of information which can help you mitigate that fear. Hi everyone, my name is David and today I will be explaining to you in 6 minutes the very basics of the stock market and everything revolving around investing in stocks. Let's get right into it. The stock market in theoretical terms is the collection of markets and different stock exchanges where buying, selling, and issuing shares of publicly traded companies can occur. A stock exchange is a place where stocks are traded. There are around 60 different major stock exchanges around the world. For example, the NYSC, which is a New York stock exchange, or the TSX, the Toronto Stock Exchange. Now, Different companies are listed under different stock exchanges. However, a company can list under more than one stock exchange where its shares will be traded simultaneously on these exchanges at the same time. A stock is essentially an ownership share in a company. When you purchase a company's stock, you're essentially purchasing a small piece of that company, which is called a share. Now, here's an example that may simplify some things. Imagine a city, say Toronto. This is a stock market. Inside Toronto, there are different pizza shops. Each pizza shop represents a stock exchange. Now, each pizza shop sells different pizzas, where each whole pizza now represents a publicly traded company. So, as you know, each pizza shop sells different pizzas. However, they can also sell some of the same pizzas, while this will represent the cross-listing of a company on multiple exchanges. Now imagine this, a whole pizza, being cut into numerous small slices. Each slice represents a share in the company's stock. The stock market works similarly to a scenario if you went to an auction to, let's say, buy furniture. At this auction, there are buyers and sellers, and both parties will negotiate the prices of the product. And when they can settle on an agreed upon price, the trade happens. In more economic terms, this is a really, really interesting scenario of supply and demand at work in real time. For every stock transaction, there is a buyer and a seller. Now, as you can imagine, if there are more buyers than sellers, then the stock price will go up. On the opposite hand, if there are more sellers than buyers, then the stock price will go down. Of course, there are numerous factors that may affect this. But in general, if a company continues to perform well, grow in the right direction, and meets expectations, this will be reflected in its share price going up. And also, it is important to think of the stock market as a forward-looking time machine. By this, I mean their valuations will represent the expected future earnings. There are two primary ways of making money in a stock market, capital gains and dividend payments. Capital gains are essentially the profit that you made from the sale of an asset, in this case, from selling the shares of a stock that you own. What does this mean? Well, here's an example. Say you buy one share of a company today for $10. Five years later, this share increases to $20, that is the market value of that share, and you decide to sell that one share. Well, now you've made double your initial money, which is also called the book value. So you've made $10 in capital gains. As a side note, there's also something called shorting a stock, which is essentially the opposite. You make money when the stock price goes down. But this is a topic that I'll dive deeper into for another video. Think of dividend payments as essentially the company saying, hey, Thank you for being a shareholder of our company. Here's some money as a reward and gesture of appreciation. So you basically get paid for owning the stock. In theoretical terms, a company takes some of its earnings and distributes it to its shareholders. Generally, a company pays dividends every quarter, and this adds up to four times per year. However, there are different payment schedules like Samway annually, annually, monthly, and this can depend on the company. Keep in mind that not all companies pay dividends. Now, this is a very general assumption, but usually growth companies like to retain all of their earnings in order to maintain their growth trajectory, while mature companies tend to offer dividend payments. Now, different companies pay different dividend amounts, and this can also change with time. Now, a company that we all know, Microsoft, for example, pays a quarterly dividend of 56 cents per share, 
meaning that if you own 50 shares of Microsoft, you will receive $28 per quarter. Now that you have a basic understanding of the stock market and how it works, you may wonder how you can invest in stocks. Well, don't worry, there are numerous ways to do so. The first is that you can open a brokerage account at a bank. This is essentially an investment account that allows you to buy and sell different investments like stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and ETFs. For example, in Canada, you can open a direct investing TFSA account, which is a tax-free savings account, RSP, Registered Retirement Savings Plan account, RESP, which is a registered education savings plan account or a cash account to invest with. Usually when performing an action such as buying or selling a stock within an investment account at a bank, you will be charged a commission fee of $9.99 per transaction. Now, of course, this fee may vary depending on the bank that you've opened your account with. Second, you can use platforms like Robinhood or Wealthsimple, which is essentially discount brokerages that allows you to invest in stocks on their web and mobile app platforms. A few advantages of Robinhood and Wealthsimple is that it is commission free, meaning that you don't have to pay a commission fee on any transactions such as buying or selling a stock. Also, these platforms allow you to buy fractional shares, meaning that if you don't have the money to buy one share of a stock, well, you can buy, say, 0.25 shares of a stock. And there you have it. Those are the basics of the stock market, how it works, how you can make money in stocks, and how to invest in it. I tried my best to condense all the material to a matter of minutes and deliver it in a simple, digestible way that allows you guys to understand it much easier. Now, as always, if you've enjoyed this video and felt like you got a lot of value from this, please support the channel by subscribing and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. I will see you in the next one.